Okay, so for this next DIY, I'm gonna be flying by the seat of my pants, but I love it because for this DIY, it's my two favorite stores. It's Target Bullseye Playground meets the Dollar Tree. So my two loves for the two stores are gonna be coming together here. So from the Target Bullseye Playground, I have this here reef that I purchased last year and it was $3 and I never got around to doing anything with it last year so i figured you know since i'm going through my craft supplies why not take it out and do something with it this time around and then this also came in a in a three pack i believe this little plaque it has a sawtooth hanger on back to hang it up with and i'm going to be using that and i have a couple of ribbons here from the dollar tree and i have them off to the side and then I have some embellishments that I'm going to see how I play around with them. I have this here. Um, this is called a Dahlia clip. And it comes on that little alligator clip thingamajiggy in the back. And I also have uh, this uh, rose bush with the eyeballs and the spider on it. I got that. And I purchased this little uh, vine bush as well as well as some bats and the bats have the little alligator clip in the back as well and i also have some of these blackberry pits also all of these items were purchased at the dollar tree and so now we're going to go ahead and combine these things and see what we come up with so to begin i kind of want this uh little sign to hang in the middle of my reef so to speak so <clears throat> I can't hang it by the uh, sawtooth hanger, obviously. So I'm going to be using some of this ribbon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it onto itself and fuse it together with some hot glue so that it'll be double-sided because this uh, ribbon is one-sided. You'll see the solid part on one side and I want it to be the same on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it together. So now I basically turned my single edge ribbon into a double sided ribbon and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tack it down to my little uh, target dollar spot sign simply by putting a little bead of glue on each corner end of my little sign and fuse my um, ribbon to uh, the sign. So now I have my little hanging sign that I could hang from the middle of my reef so we're going to go ahead and put that to the side and now we're going to go and remove our little hanger from the reef and we're going to start figuring out the placement of some of these embellishments so I know that I want to kind of put it off to the side and I do want to use some of these branches so I'm going to start with that okay so I started off by cutting that stem, the bouquet off of the um, stem and separating the branches. And so now I'm just kind of, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of uh, feeding it through the holes. And I'm just gonna kind of like, you know, keep intertwining it and sewing them in to try to see how much I can get away without gluing down. Okay, so here's a look at what I got going on so far. And I did uh, three branches. Um, it had five, actually. So here's the other two. I put them to the side in case I want to use them later. But um, for now, I think that's good. And so now what I went ahead and did was I just pulled off one of the roses from my bush. And uh, it has like a long stem. So I'm going to try to cut this down and then i'm gonna glue it right over here to cover up where i tuck the uh, stems in i'm gonna glue it there as such and i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna add a nice generous amount of hot glue to my rosebud and i'm gonna press it right on top of those stems then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna place another one right underneath it, just to give it a little more symmetry. And I'm gonna hold it there in place. So now that covers up, you know, where I tucked in the stems around back. So now you can't see it. And so now I went ahead and I cut off those spiders that were on that bouquet. And I'm gonna tuck 
a spider over here on top like that and give it put a little glue and then maybe another one over here as well just to kind of give it a uh, symmetry so we're just gonna add the glue on the spider and we're gonna get it down and put it here on top of the rose okay so here's a look at what we got going on so far and a funny story is that i usually have issues when it comes to those glue webs with my glue gun and this is the one project where i wouldn't mind some of those glue webs because it would be authentic to the spiders and i haven't gotten any i got like maybe a little one right there and that's it so now i'm gonna come in and i'm gonna put some of these uh bats on the opposite side because um, I want it to be more one-sided, but I also want uh, symmetry, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna see how it looks with just a couple of bats and see how many I um, wanna put on it. So uh, these things have those little alligator clips, so that works out perfect for this DIY because I'm not trying to do any more gluing. So let's see, I just put that one right there. So I ended up using three because one of them broke these um, bats. They come off the clip so easily. So I thought about putting the dahlia on this side or on the bottom, but I don't know. It's kind of overcrowding it because I want to hang the um, October 31st from the center. So I think I'm gonna just leave it like that with that um, those things and maybe put like a couple of berries or something. So let's see how that looks. So the berries come on individual branches all twisted up like that together. And I think I'm gonna leave them together. I'm not gonna take them apart because that'll just be too much gluing and stuff. So I think I'm just gonna kind of like tuck it in through here somewhere. I don't want to cover up the eyeball, so I don't want to go in here. I think I'm just going to go in through here by the branches. All right, so that was easy enough. I pretty much just took the wire and twisted it around the back in the back. And that's it. Just And it kind of uh, holds the um, branches in place since I didn't glue them down. So it's kind of adhering the branches in place. So now I like what I got going on so far with the symmetry on the both sides. And then I want to hang this in the middle. So I think I'm just going to take a piece of this um, polka dot burlap from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so now what I think I'm going to do to hang it is I'm just going to loop my little sign through and then I'm going to... Uh, Put it over the um, wreath like that and fuse it together with some hot glue and then I'll be able to hang it like this on the wall and there we go with our bats falling off you see what I mean so to finish this one out I'm simply just gonna fuse it with a line of this uh, hot glue I'm gonna put these two pieces together as such press it down with my scissors and then I'm going to fold it down in half onto itself to double it up and reinforce it. So I'm going to put some more glue on it and then I'm going to press it on to itself and this will be our hanger for the wreath. All right, guys, here's a look at the finished product. I'm loving the way that this came together. My two favorite stores, Target Bullseye Playground and the Dollar Tree, what a pair. And I'm really digging the way that it all came together and I hope you like it too. So to begin this next craft, I have some of these here stickers that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and they have a Halloween theme on them and I thought they were interesting enough to try to see if I could come up with a project with them. I also found one of these little galvanized houses that are just sitting on this little platform. I picked up one of those. I have some uh, black and white chalk paint and I have some mini screwdrivers, my paintbrushes, and my palettes. So for starters to begin, 
I'm going to commence by removing these two little screws and just detaching my house so that I can be a little bit more comfortable painting it without messing up the bottom of that uh, little platform. And so this is where the little bitty screwdriver comes in. I'm just going to give my little screws a twist, simple as that, and remove them so that I can detach my house because I'm not the neatest painter that there is. So now it'll be more convenient for me to paint both pieces individually. So I'm gonna start by mixing in a couple of drops of my black paint together with my white paint to try to make like a gray. Since I'm out of gray, I'm gonna make my own shade and that's the color that I'm gonna go with whatever shade this comes out to. And this is the color that we came up with. It's kind of close to the color that was already on here, but the purpose of this was just to tone down that shine, you know, from the galvanized look. We want to make it more of a matte. So I'm going to continue to get this paint on my little house, both front and back, and then allow it some dry time. So while I'm allowing my little tin house some time to set up and dry, I'm gonna come in with some of this here Craftwise black chalk paint, and I'm gonna paint that bottom little pedestal black, which is why I wanted to uh, detach it from the house so that I wouldn't, you know, get it all over the place. As I indicated, I'm not the neatest painter. So now, while I set my little pedestal out to dry with that same paintbrush that I used to paint the uh, pedestal, while my um, house is still drying, I'm going to come in, because it's still kind of damp, I'm going to come in with that paintbrush and I'm just going to slightly dry brush. I don't want to go too heavy handedly. I'm just going to come in at the edges as such and i'm going to dry brush my little house all the way around to give it that little spooky shade okay so pretty much this is what we got going on it's pretty dry to the touch and i did go ahead and give it just the one coat on both sides with that paint that we made and i just didn't want to let it go to waste so i did both sides of it and then i dry brushed it with just a little bit of that black that was left from the uh, pedestal just to give it that uh, spooky look. So now we're going to come in with some of these here Dollar Tree stickers. And already for starters, I already know that I want to put this owl. I want to put it over here up by the chimney. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that by the chimney first. So now that we got that down over by the chimney, I'm gonna press that in. And I'm only using the adhesive that it has on the backing. I'm not using any extra adhesive. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go with these little uh, skulls and I'm gonna try to center that and place it right in the center of the house as such. Then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna take this little bat and I'm gonna put the little bat over here on this side of the house, right there as such. Then I like this little black cat. So I'm gonna put the little cat down here in the corner as such. I also like this little feather and I'm just going to drop this feather down here as if the uh, feather came off the owl and it lands it there. Then from this pack, I like this uh, little boo here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that boo out and I'm going to put it up on the, so I'm going to take that little boo out. And we'll just put it right there. Try to censor it to the best of our ability, like that. Then I like this little witch's hat. So we'll put that somewhere. I also like this little crescent moon. And so I'm gonna put the crescent moon 
right at the peak of the house. And this is what we got going on so far. It's looking kind of empty right here. And so, I don't know. I was thinking I kind of like the uh, the broom, but it, it says Happy Halloween. So, I don't know if I want to put that there. Let's see how it looks. So, let's see how this uh, little broom looks over here i actually like it because it kind of goes you know it coordinates with the witch's hat and the cat so that's it now, now what's next to do is to put those little screws back on and attach our house to the platform and so we're just going to take it and screw it right back in to where it was put it right back in that housing where those screws originally were and screw them right back in with our mini little screwdriver also from the dollar tree of course and we're going to tighten up those screws as such and that's it guys a simple quick and easy way to elevate these little metal houses from the dollar tree and turn them into some spectacular halloween decor and you can use this to create a little halloween village, which is what I intend to do, and I hope I inspire you. So for this next simple, fun and easy Halloween craft, I have this four piece pack of these little mini cauldrons. And this, I'm assuming, is to, you know, put candy in for Halloween and, you know, like individual portions. But uh, we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to do something else with it. But first, I'm going to start by removing this uh, tape that's being annoying right now. So because I like to share with you my triumphs and failures, I did want to go ahead and show that that uh, window cling was a bust. It was a fail. I even tried to cut it down and it was just too big and it wasn't happening. So I had to resort to my uh, last resort was to get some of this here 100% uh, acetone nail polish remover and my little trusty cotton round and I removed that uh, decal and so my uh, rounds is still wet and so I'm showing you here how it just takes a little elbow grease and sorry for shaking the camera but I went ahead and did it off camera on the other side so I wouldn't uh, shake but so you basically have to give it a little bit of elbow grease and get that cotton round pretty saturated with that nail polish remover and it does start to come off as you see and you just got to keep going over it until, and I have my glove on so that I don't mess up my manicure like I already started to. But we're just going to continue on until we remove the uh, decal altogether. So now that we've got our decal removed from both sides, which wasn't entirely necessary because we're already going to be working with the one side. But I did want to go ahead and show you on camera how I removed you know, the decals from the cauldron with the uh, nail polish remover. So now that I removed it, I'm just giving it a wipe with a regular paper towel and getting it all nice and dry. And so I decided that I was going to improvise and I'm going to be resorting back to my stickers that I used on the earlier project. And I'm simply going to be using this one here that says Witch's Brew. So, I like that it's round and it's perfect for what we're going to be using it and so I'm going to try to center it going by the handles and I'm going to pop it right there in the middle of our cauldron and hold it into place. I also like this little silver lettering that says All Hallows Eve. I'm going to put that here right beside the witch's brew on the bottom right hand corner of our mini cauldron. Now to make it symmetrical on the opposite side, I'm gonna use this little silver wording that just says eek, and I'm gonna put it on the left hand corner opposite side of that which is brew and the All Hallows Eve. And that's it, I mean, it was fine the way that it was 
with the uh, design decal that it had, but they weren't really centered and they look kind of crooked to me and you could barely notice them. And I just think this elevated it a little bit. I don't know, or maybe it's just me, but I feel like it looks better like this. And now to complete this project, I'm simply gonna take this pack of eyeballs that I purchased also from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna fill my little cauldron with some eyeballs for a spooky effect. And that's it guys, simplest, easiest craft ever. This is our uh, witch's brew here and that's it. All right guys, lastly for the most simplest DIY ever and I kid you not, it can't get any more simpler than this. I have for you a picture frame that I purchased at the Dollar Tree but it actually was another color. It was like a teal a teal green color and I did go ahead and paint it black for another project and like I said I'm just going through my stash and a lot of my supplies that I already have at hand so I'm going to be repurposing this frame however ideally for this project it would have been best to use a five by seven picture frame but since like I said I only have the four by six at hand this is what I'm going to be using so I did go ahead and open it up and take it apart part beforehand just to measure it out and this is where I said that ideally the picture frame should have been five by seven but we're going to make it work so I have this little um handmade card from the Dollar Tree from the Voila brand and so it's just a little happy Halloween card with the skeleton skeleton I thought he was so cute because his um body is posable you could actually move the arms and legs so I thought that was neat um, but it appears it's going to be a little too big for the frame once I measured it out with the glass. But um, fortunately enough, you know, it has that little framing inside that it's already, uh, you know, uh, traced out. So I'm going to go and I'm going to follow that same pattern with my scissors. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to cut away at this little um, card so that it could fit down to the size of my frame. So I wanted to show that it has two lines. It has the inner line and then it has the outer line. So clearly just to ensure that it's going to fit comfortably, I'm going to go and follow that inner line just to make sure I get it down to the size of the frame. And there you have it, guys. Like I said, it doesn't get any easier than that. All I did was cut it down to size. And now I'm just going to pose my little guy here like he's dancing. And I'm going to slap him right back into the picture frame and hopefully get this bad boy closed out. And we're just going to put the contents of the frame backing back in and carefully put those pins down without breaking the glass. And there you have it, guys, an instant piece of seasonal holiday decor. Don't sleep on the tree, guys. When it comes to their seasonal holiday gift cards, you can always pop them into any little picture decor frame and turn them into instant decor that you can proudly display on any vignette, pop it inside a tea tray, hang it on a wall. The opportunities are limitless. You can do what you want with these little cards and they're just thinking adorable. I knew from the start, once I saw that little skeleton that I was gonna be doing this and I hope this inspires you to think outside the box as well.